Welcome, everyone, to the Thursday afternoon edition of uh, the HockeyDebates.com podcast, powered by SportsBettingDime.com. Uh, I'm Bob Duff, and as always, uh, this Hockey Debates podcast is brought to you by Sports Betting Dime, your leading source for odds, sports news, and game predictions. If you're looking to see who's the favorite to win the Stanley Cup, the Hart Trophy, or who's going to win a specific series, Check out all the info at sportsbettingdime.com. We'll be talking about some of their Stanley Cup odds today, and we'll also leave a link in the description of this episode for you to be able to get to their site and see all they have to offer. So today we are joined, as always, by my esteemed Hall of Fame writing colleague, Kevin Allen. And today our guests are a couple of the uh, Sports Betting Dime experts who are going to lay some uh, sports betting genius on us today. We've got Matt McEwen. The editor in chief at sportsbettingdime.com and our regular panel member, Sasha Farouk, the lead odds maker at sportsbettingdime.com. As you probably guessed, sportsbettingdime.com is our sponsor. And uh, today we're just going to kind of throw some information and some knowledge about Sports Betting Dime to people that maybe aren't as familiar with it. So, Matt, why don't you just uh, you know, tell us a little bit about sportsbettingdime.com and what it offers? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Bob. I appreciate uh, you and Kevin having me on here. It's uh, an honor to be here with you. I love love the intro, by the way. The uh, I mean, the SBD across the top there. That's that's great. I love it. Um, so yeah, you know, we're we're honored to be sponsoring this podcast. Uh, you know, Bob, Kevin, you guys are uh, you know, fantastic. Uh, you, know, you call us betting geniuses. I think we got the hockey geniuses uh, up top there. So you know, we're we're really happy to be partnered up with you guys here and uh, sponsoring this podcast. So, you know, like you said, what is SBD? Um, you know, I, I, I've listened to the last few, and you guys do a great job of, uh, you know, describing who we are, what we do. But, you know, I, I think I'll give you a little bit of an insider uh, touch here. So I think the number one thing that, that we want to make clear is we work for the betters. You know, we aren't here working for sports books. Um, and, and, you know, I, I completely understand why some people would not necessarily trust um, you know, certain advice coming from sports books. You see them with with their their picks people, and I get why some people don't necessarily trust them. You know, the sports book doesn't want you taking their money, and hey, a lot of the time the best betters aren't uh, always welcome at sports books either, right? So we we work for you, we work for the betters, and you know what we strive to do is give you all the betting information you need to make an informed wager on any sport, um, entertainment, politics. So you know, how do we do that? Well, um, you know, first of all, we provide you with the best sports book reviews. Um, you know, whatever state you're in, um, we, we know the books that are legal and we will review them for you. So, you know, you get get this, get off uh, on the right foot right from the start. Um, as I said, legalization, touching on all that, um, you know, we'll tell you what's going on in your state. Sash has been great for that. Um, he's, he's the real genius over there on that stuff. But, um, you know, wherever your state is in terms of legalization, Sasha knows about it. SBD has got the, uh, the information for you. Um, but, you know, on top of that, we, we always have the most uh, up to date uh, odds on, you know, sporting events, like I said, entertainment, politics. Um, our matchup page is actually, I, I really think, are, you know, one of the best parts of the site right now. Um, whether you're looking for line history, line shopping, team trends, uh, player stats, team stats, injury reports, you know, whatever you need to make a bet on that game, we've got it for you. So, um, you know, this being a hockey podcast, make sure you check out uh, all the matchup pages for uh, the hockey games tonight, tomorrow, when, uh, whenever you may be looking to make a bet. But um, getting into some more of our, our unique stuff here, um, we, we really have made uh, ourselves the, the home for future trackers. So, you know, we're not talking, you look at many of our competitors, they provide you with you know, what are, what are the most recent futures odds, but we go above and beyond for you. You know, we're providing you with not just the most recent, but we're showing you the ride that, that every team's taken uh, along the way, right? So uh, I'm sure Sash has uh, talked quite a bit about the, the NHL, uh, the Stanley Cup tracker already, but, you know, if, if you're following along with our tracker, you know that this year Chicago's been offered at uh, 500 to 1 at one point in February. Uh, Columbus, you could have found at 200 to 1 in December. Uh, even Philadelphia, you know, the uh, one, one of the favorites right now, uh, you could have had it 50 to 1 in late October. So, 
you know, it doesn't maybe necessarily uh, help you make that bet right now. Uh, you can't get that, those 50 to one odds anymore for sure. But, um, you know, being able to see the ride uh, kind of helps you figure out the trends, figure out, you know, the highs and lows that each team's experienced. Um, along with that, you know, any bit of breaking news in any sport, we are um, we're on top of. We're telling you how it affects the betting scene, um, whether that be a single game, the futures, a prop bet. We got it all. Um, so on, on top of that, I mean, I, I kind of want to throw out a couple of our, our new features um, to, to, I know Bob and Kevin, you guys have seen some of them here. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for your listeners here and for those, you know, hockey fans, um, SPD Play is, you know, one of, one of the, I, I think this is going to, you know, really take off. It, it's already got um, you know, thousands, uh, tens of thousands of, of people signed up. Um, but it's, it's really starting to take off now that we have sports back. Uh, we just launched this kind of early, um, sorry, late, late 2020, sorry, uh, late 2019. I'm stuck in 2020 here. It's been such a long year. Um, so we, we launched this late 2019 and, you know, unfortunately ran into the, the uh, coronavirus stoppages. So just as we were really picking up, we, we you know, suffered through that. No games put that on. Um, now, you know, we're back and we're seeing a ton of, uh, ton of new users. So what is SPD Play? It is a free-to-play sportsbook. So I, I know that, you know, some people have the luxury of, of making uh, sports bets in, in their state, but not everybody does. So you know, how, how do you, how do you prepare yourself for when the time comes? Well, we're giving you the practice, right? So you head to SPD play. It's the exact sports book experience you will get. Um, you know, you, you pick whatever game you want. Uh, we've got money line spread totals hockey here for, you know, puck line. Um, but you know, you make your bets. It's a weekly contest. Uh, you start with $500 and the person who makes the most profit by the end of the week, wins a five hundred dollar weekly prize. Um, so we, you know, with more and more users coming, we're also talking about kind of some uh, prize expansion. Um, you know, making it uh, a little easier to win. Not necessarily easier to win, but more opportunity to win. Um, so SPD Play, uh, you know, check it out. We do have an app now available on uh, both iOS and Android. Um, as well as that, you know, we, we've got our own actually. Uh, we've got an odds app coming out, SPD Odds. So. Um, you know, what, what you get on the website, you'll be able to get just uh, in, a, in a handy app. Um, again, both iOS and Android. Um, and I think one of the more exciting things uh, for, for me, anyways, that we have coming out, uh, we're calling it SBD Plus. It's a uh, membership service. So, you know, you will be able to get all the, you know, kind of inside information, the stuff that the sports books maybe aren't making public, uh, as well as, you know, not many other no other competitors are, are making this uh, this public. You know, you'll get money percentages, uh, bet percentages for every game, um, as well as some some inside looks at uh, some longstanding trends, things like that. So, um, you know, keep your eyes open for that. Um, and yeah, you know, I think I've uh, I've talked your guys' ears off enough here. I think. <laughs> well, I want to know myself getting into this industry. I had thirty years of sports writing experience, but very little sports betting writing experience, and didn't know. I probably knew about as much about sports betting as the Toronto Maple Leafs do about winning the Stanley Cup. So it was uh, it was a real educational experience. And one of the things that really helped me, and you know, for people that I'm sure who haven't bet on sports, it's a little intimidating to start. And you guys have so many like, at sports betting down. There's so many pages explaining how everything works, and you know, the kind of the ins and outs, the ABCs of sports betting for someone who's never done it before. You know, all the uh, it's like having a, getting a PhD in sports betting by the time you read through all that stuff. Uh, that's a great point, Bob. And I mean, first of all, uh, I, I wish you didn't have to throw that Leafs dagger at me. I, I am a Leafs fan here. It still, it still hurts a little bit. Um, but no, that that's uh, another great point there, Bob. You know, our, our how to stuff um, is really top notch. And you know, whether like you said, whether you're you know, just kind of a beginner, um, just just getting started. We we have you covered. Or if you're someone who's more seasoned and you know you're looking for some advanced resources, some strategy, you know, we we've got that as well. So uh, another great point there, Bob. Yeah. So in terms of hockey specifically, what are some of the things that a hockey better is going to find at SVB that they might not find anywhere else? 
Well, I mean, as, as I mentioned, you know, Sasha, um, you know, working the the Stanley Cup tracker. Um, again, you know, a lot of a lot of places have the the current odds you can go find, but uh, nobody else in in the industry has the the tracker. And you know, showing the odds from beginning of the season till the end of the season, um, and and just really getting the that entire ride. So you know, the trackers are are huge. Um, the matchup pages, um, as, as I mentioned, you know, we we provide every bit of information you need to go make that informed bet. Um, and on top of that, you know, Sasha has been awesome with the, the news coverage, you know, we're, we're looking at how each game, um, you know, is affecting the, the futures, uh, whether that be Stanley cup, whether that be odds to win the series, uh, we, we've got all that coverage there. So, um, along with that, you know, you can come see the, the scores and results, you know, betting results, um, specifically, um, you know, team trends, uh, helping you make whatever wager you want to make, um, as well as we've got some great experts here too, you know. Uh, like I said, the two guys up top here do a lot of our our hockey writing for us, and uh, you know their their advice, their tips, uh, top notch. So uh, we've got. I've, I actually saw someone post on Twitter the other day that they'd almost be willing to trade off never going to another game in person to be able to watch hockey all day long, like we've had the last <laughs> weeks. But um, we've obviously got games coming up tonight. If you got any. Uh, suggestions about uh, which way people should be looking at some of these uh, games later in the day? So. I, I was actually, you know, as we're talking here, I was kind of quickly peeking up, uh, checking the, the Columbus Tampa Bay score. I, I have, I have Columbus winning this one. Um, so fingers crossed they can hold this two to one lead. Uh, the three games tonight though, I, I like the over in all three. Um, since the, the uh, first round of the playoffs has started um, all but two games. So two, only two of the eight games. Uh, have seen less than five goals in it, uh, in them, sorry. So I, I'm riding with the over tonight. I think we're really going to see, um, you know, a, a ton of goals. I think the Chicago-Vegas uh, game, uh, I just don't know that uh, uh, Chicago can really stop that that Vegas offense. I think we're going to see another big game out of them. Uh, but I think Chicago gets on the board a little more themselves too. Um, and, and, yeah, I like you over in the other two as well. I, I was kind of leaning Carolina as well. I was thinking of taking both the uh, – both dogs today who, you know, lost in, in overtime in game one. Um, but I, I'm, I, I like the over a little better in that Carolina Boston game than, than Carolina. All right, Matt. Well, we certainly appreciate the, the insight today about sports We're delighted to have you guys as our sponsor and uh, we're doing our best to do you proud. And uh, thanks for joining us today. And you're always welcome to come back whenever you want. Thanks so much, guys. No, you're doing us very proud. And, uh, hey, I'll, I'll leave you guys to uh, talk some real hockey. <laughs> okay, thanks a lot, Matt. All right, guys. So uh, we are into round – it is, I guess, round one, even though it feels like round two because we had the play-in series. It's just – this whole playoff thing is confusing to me. I, mean, I, it's I consider that play-in round to have been playoffs. So as far as I'm concerned, this is round two, but yet they call it round one. I mean, if they just – simplified things and called it the Western Conference and Eastern Conference quarterfinals. We wouldn't have to put a, a number on the round. It's not just confusing to you. I can't tell you in my role as an editor how much different nomenclature there has been around the, what happened so far. Some people were calling the qualification series the first round. Some people were calling the round robins exhibition games. And it was just, it was all over the map and trying to keep it uniform within the site was extremely difficult with so many different... Uh, writers working well we, i can't even keep the day straight like every day i gotta actually concentrate on what day of the week it is uh just because we're just not accustomed to having hockey uh in the middle of the day so i always make sure i double check that whether it's tuesday or wednesday or thursday or friday because i'm never quite sure in these days when uh, everybody's at home all the time well as, as a writer you always in the playoffs you're, it was either game day or off day you never really cared if it was Tuesday or Wednesday or Thursday, you just, is there a game tonight or do I not come up with an off day story? But we've obviously got games now where, you know, everybody's in a winner go home mode now. There's no more of these round robin games. Three upsets in the game ones in the first round so far. We saw Calgary stop Dallas 3 2. Vancouver, the team we all kind of like, beat the defending cup champion St. Louis and, uh, Another team that I think nobody's talking about that I think is a real good shot here, the New York Islanders took out Washington. And uh, you know, 
Matt did talk about how the overs played well, but it seems like the teams that play defense well, for the most part, are the teams that are winning. And, you know, we kind of thought offense would kind of run the show here, but that hasn't been the case. The defensive teams are still kind of holding the fort. So what were your impressions, Sasha, after game one? Which team surprised you? Which teams do you think uh, are the real deal? Um, honestly, Vancouver surprised me the most. Um and there is just sort of one exception to defensive teams uh, winning the day so far. Um, but the the massive goaltending advantage they seem to have in game one was something that really surprised me. I, I thought that Jordan uh, Bennington was going to pick up his game after um, the round robin when he wasn't terribly good and Jake Allen put in their best performance. Um, but the sort of massive gap in goaltending that those teams got in game one was the the biggest surprise to me of the first of the first eight games so far yeah i'm starting to wonder bob whether um you know we're seeing sort of a change in the way the nhl works like um for so many years experience really mattered i used to say things like you got to lose in the playoffs before you learn how to win but you know with now the way speed is and has become so important and making sure you got a lot of younger players it seems to me we're sort of moving to energy. Um, and, you know, I look at a team like like Vancouver, and I said before the playoffs, like, you know, what I love about them is starting next season, I think we're going to see them as listed among the, uh, you know, top contenders for the Stanley Cup. But now that I've watched them, you know, game one in the first round, having watched what happened in the um, qualification round, I, I'm starting to wonder whether or not, you know, we're missing the boat here and that they're, you know, they could actually make it a deep run uh, this season. And, you know, not so different than from the Carolina experience last year when they kind of surprised people and uh, uh, were able to go all the way to the conference final. They didn't play particularly well in that conference final. But, you know, when you look at this Vancouver team and, you know, they have all the elements, it's just they're all young and inexperienced. Like, they have a dominant defenseman in Quinn Hughes. Like, what a remarkable player he is. You know, they've got the goaltending in, in Markstrom. But, he, you know, he doesn't have that, that playoff experience, but he's playing with exuberance, and they're feeding off his energy. You know, up front, they got a big shot guy in, in Besser. they got a, a budding superstar in Pedersen. They've got a real leader and a, a guy that gets it done um, in Horvat. Horvat. Um, yeah, they, they just have all the ingredients um, that you need. They just haven't been there before. And I wonder if we're seeing, like, you know, are we going to reach the point where, you know, experience is nice, but if you don't have it, as long as you have that energy and then you have the, the ingredients necessary, you can win. I, I've been really impressed with the Vancouver Canucks. And uh, I, I just think, uh, uh, you know, they may be a team that could surprise us and go deep into the playoffs. Yeah, the emergence of Horvat, I think, has been huge for them. You're uh, someone who follows the team quite closely and has for the last 34 years. It sort of reminds me of a young Trevor Linden. Um, the way that he picked up his skating, he is a lot faster than he was when he first came into the league. And he always had the toughness and the size and pretty decent hands and a decent shot. And when you throw in a little more foot speed, it makes him an awfully dangerous player. Yeah. You know, living in where Kevin and I live, we hear a lot from Red Wings fans. And ever since... The draft year when uh, the Canadians passed on Philip Zadina and took Kotkin the Emmy, there's been barbs tossed back and forth on social media between Wings fans on and Cats fans about who got it right. But I think it's time to say they both got it wrong. They should have both taken Quinn Hughes. <laughs> yeah. Well, well they, I mean, there's no doubt that Red Wings would be farther ahead um, if that was the case. Um, you know, he's, you know, the, what he's accomplished, like, you know, when he first uh, started making an impact, people said, well, you know, he's really good for a player that young. Now they just say he's really good. Uh, you know, he makes things happen. And does he make mistakes? Sure. But, you know, I watched Ray Bork his entire career, and he was not a flawless defenseman. He was just the best defenseman in all three zones. But, you know, he'd make passes that if any other guy would do it, he'd say, what is he thinking? Uh, because sometimes they wouldn't work. You know, he took chances. And I think that same thing is true with Quinn Hughes, even though, you know, he does make mistakes. He makes mistakes in the name of making things happen. And, you know, that's what you really want. And, you know, most of the top defensemen in this league are risk takers. When you, you talk about speed, if you look at that Calgary-Dallas game, 
they looked like Dallas was skating in quicksand compared to Calgary. They just looked so much slower than Calgary in that game. And, you know, Dallas is really having an issue with getting going. They've been outscored 6 nothing in the first period, and they're not a team that can dig a hole because they, they were 26 in the league in goals. So I think Dallas is a team to me that's vastly overrated. I see them at plus 1,500 to win the Stanley Cup. Uh, I don't think they get by Calgary. No, neither do I. Um, the disappearance of Tyler Sagan, I, I, I think we all know he's dealing with a pretty significant injury, uh, more than anyone's letting on. But when you take him away from <laughs> what started out as a pretty offensively anemic team, there's just not a lot left outside of your ice can in, <laughs> making it happen from, from the blue line. Yeah, I, the only uh, reason that I thought Dallas had a chance is I, I don't love Calgary. Um, I, I, you know, there's a, I have a lot of mistrust for, um, um, you know, yeah, what they do. Um, so um, I, I don't love their goaltending. Uh, I don't, you know, I, I think uh, Goudreau is, is good for a while. He's inconsistent. So I, I thought that Dallas had a chance because I like Ben Bishop. Um, but, you know, obviously he hasn't played. And their, their lack of scoring is really perplexing. Like, you look at their, their lineup, they should score more. I don't know, you know, that they would ever be a top-scoring team with the lineup they have, but I don't know why they can't score uh, some. Well, Bishop is supposed to get the start. That's the rumor tonight, so we'll see if he can make a difference. But that's just another sign that it's the Stanley Cup playoffs because we're talking about a Ben Bishop injury. Isn't that just the Pretty par for the course every every well not spring this time around but every playoff year it seems like something's wrong is it maybe Ben's body's just too big for to be a goalie and he just can't stay he's always pulled something I don't know but uh, I think he could make a difference if they get him back in that because obviously he's a guy that can win the game. Yeah, I mean I, I think that I mean if you look at their back end too like Heiskanen and Klingberg are uh, you know guys that can create offense and they can help. Uh, you know, move that offense a little bit, but it almost, you know, all of a sudden Pavelski looks like 123 years old. And, um, you know, I, I, Jamie Ben has not been the same player for the last two or three seasons. So, um, you know, but I, I will give Calgary, you know, Cam Talbot's played better than uh, uh, I thought he would play. So, I mean, they, they certainly were playing better than, than Dallas when they, when they came in. Well, let's talk about the, the Stanley Cup tracker right now and the current odds. It's got Vegas as the plus 450 favorite, Tampa's at 500, Boston at plus 600, Colorado at plus 600, and then you got Philly and St. Louis at plus 900. Sasha, who do you think, if you had to pick a favorite in, a, in this group, who are you going with right now? Who's your Stanley Cup winner at this point? Uh, that's hard for me. Um, it's it's a little easier for me to pick a conference champion, so maybe I can just um, skew the question a little bit. Um, in the East, I absolutely love Philadelphia, the way they're playing right now. Um, they're extremely defensively sound. Carter Hart is playing um, like a potential Con Smythe winner, uh, and they have a ton of forward depth. Um, and the way that they've carried over the momentum that they had right before the pause straight through you know, five months later is just unbelievable to me. Uh, I think Olean Vino is doing a tremendous job coaching them. Um, and I, I would, I would, I'd be putting money on Philadelphia to come out of the East, even, um, even with the way that, that Tampa Bay and Boston still look pretty strong to me. Um, and then in the West, between Vegas and Colorado, I think I have to sign up, aside with Vegas, um, just because I love the pickup of Robin Leonard uh, in goal. If this was still Mark Andre Fleury in that pair of the Golden Knights, I just I don't think he's the same goalie he used to be. Um, but picking up Robin Leonard and inserting him as the starter, uh, I, li I like the Golden Knights just a little bit more because they have um, more forward depth, and I like their defenseman uh, more than more than Colorado. But it's going to be tight. I fully expect them to meet in the Western Conference Finals. What about you, Kevin? Let's go that route then. Who are your conference finals? Well, I, you know, I, I hate to do uh, copy off Sasha, but I feel exactly the same way. All the reasons I, I said about how it seems like to me the NHL is changing, that's why I like Philadelphia. You know, they're an energy team. They're young. They don't know what they don't know, but they don't seem to care. Um, you know, a mobile defense, uh, a guy like Provorov can be a difference maker at times. And then Carter Hart. I mean, he's so young, he has no idea, um, you know, what, what it takes to win a Stanley Cup, and he doesn't seem to care. Like, he's, 
he's Carey Price without the pedigree. Um, and, you know, that, that was his idol. And I, I like everything about them. You know, they have enough scoring. They have a guy, Gattierier, who, um, you know, was first came up and everybody said he was, and I think it almost hurt him that they, they said he was so good defensive. Like he didn't, you know, he did scratch the surface of his offensive ability. And then after he'd been in the league a while, someone must have said to him, you know, you actually could score if you, you know, put a little more effort in it and not worry about defense 100% of the time, maybe just 86% of the time. And now all of a sudden he's a top player. So I love the way they're playing. Uh, I, I still, you know, I, I like Tampa too. There's so much talent there, so much depth. Uh, I think they're going to get by Columbus, uh, even though I know we're all worried a little bit about that because Tortorella's teams are difficult to, to play against. And in the West, I know how good Colorado is. I love Nathan McKinnon. I think he's the the uh, biggest impact player still alive. But I absolutely love this Vegas Golden Knights, and they are so smart. Like everybody thought they were adding insurance when they got Robin Leonard, and they weren't. They looked at Mark Andre Fleury, who they just worship because he's the most popular player. He's an incredible guy in the dressing room. They love everything about him, but they watched him not perform at the same level. And Robin Leonard, meanwhile, was playing great in Chicago. And I, I believe that they saw this coming. They saw that Robin Leonard was going to end up being their playoff goalie. And they didn't want to say it, you know, obviously, because, you know, in case they were wrong. But I think they saw this coming. And you look at that Vegas lineup, and what I love about it, they're not a single player dependent like we see. You know, they don't have that superstar score like Washington's got to have Ovechkin score, you know. Even even the, the Bruins, you know, they need that top line going. Vegas has got a lot of guys that can score, and they have a lot of top players, not any great players up front. Their defense is the same way. They play well as a cohesive unit. The Martinez trade, I think, really has solidified that group. And Shea Theodore, Theodore you know, stepping up and playing at a little bit level, higher level this year has really helped them as well. So I'm going Vegas, and I'm going to actually take Vegas to win the Cup over Philadelphia. Well, I'm going to agree with you guys 50%. I like the Flyers, too. I actually saw a tweet today from former NHL goalie Eddie Lack where he said, Carter Hart's the best goalie he's seen in person since the first time he saw Kerry Bryce play a game. So that's a, a pretty high compliment coming from a, a peer who played goal in the NHL. And they, the Flyers just have every piece of the puzzle, it seems like. They've got, they're good on the back end. They've got mobile guys. They've got depth up front. They've got the goalie. I always like Dal Andino as a coach. He's taken two other teams to the cup final already. He hasn't won it yet, but he's gotten there twice. There's, I just think Philly's the team to beat. Tampa Bay to me is starting they're starting to I'm gonna age myself here, but they're starting to remind me of those early Rangers, early seventies Rangers teams. They always look so great on paper. You were convinced one of these years they're gonna win it all and they never could get over that hump. And I'm gonna, I guess a more common reference to a team like that would be Sharks. They had all those great teams for all those years. And never could seem to get over the hump. And I think that's starting what I'm wondering, is that going to be Tampa Bay's fate? Are they going to be this great team on paper that never puts it together and wins it all? Uh, where I'm going to disagree with you is in the West, because I really like the Avalanche. I think they've taken a step further each of the last three years. They've kind of grown together. They've added some pieces I really like, uh, Jonas Donskoy and even uh, – Belmer, that former Vegas player, you know, guys that have been there, have played in the cup final. You know, Nazem Kadri's given them a great second line center. And they figured it cost them those series against the Bruins. I think what he's done for uh, the Avalanche has given them that second line, that guy who can play against the other team's top players. And I just think they've got all the pieces there. And uh, I think Colorado is going to be the team that wins the West. And I think they're the team that's going to win the Cup, in my opinion. What if you had to pick a sleeper on this list? Like, who's a team that maybe could uh, – obviously, we both like – we all like Vancouver. But what about the East? I kind of like the Islanders, I mentioned. I, I like the way they play defense. I like Barry Trotz as a coach. Can they score enough goals? That's the one thing that could hold them back. But – I think if I was picking a sleeper in the East, I'd go with the Islanders. What about you, Kevin? Yeah, I, you know, um, just to be a little bit different, maybe what I'd say is is Columbus. Um, uh, I, I think uh, 
if they can get by Tampa here, and I think that's a big if, um, you know, like who knows? Like they're a team that is built to play and win in the postseason the way we always played it. Uh, you know, they're, they're hard to play against. Um, you know, they can put a ring around the net. Seth Jones has just been a beast in every game that he's played. Um, and, you know, and they, you know, Dubois, I think, is coming of age. Um, you know, every game he makes one pass that's, uh, um, you know, uh, high caliber. And uh, um, I, I, I think they could just get if Pat Kinkinson can play, and I think they could get enough goals. So I guess they would be my sleep. But I like the Islanders, too, though. I, I think Barry Trotz knows a lot about how to win in the postseason. And uh, I think he gets a lot out of his players, especially defensively. But I share your concern about the offense. They're 22nd uh, ranked in the NHL in the regular season. and uh, um, But, you know, they've got guys who can score. I mean, and they, they have Barzell, obviously, as a dynamic player. And Anders Lee has scored 30 in this league. And Brock Nelson is a pretty consistent scorer. So they have some guys that can put the puck in the net. How about you, Sasha? Have you got an Eastern Conference sleeper? Um, it would be Carolina. <laughs> they just they got such bad luck uh, running into Boston here. It's the one team in the league that just seems to have their number. I think they're now something like 1-9-1 and one in their last 11 against the Bruins. Um, if, if you put them in a seven-game series against basically any other team in the league, it, it would be almost a pick on that worst uh, for the Hurricanes. So if there's any any way that they can get by Boston here, I like them to to make a very deep run and give whoever they face next uh, and in the ensuing rounds all sorts of problems. All right. The clock on the wall is telling me we've run out of time yet again. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, today. We'll be back again with another show on Tuesday. This is the HockeyDebates.com podcast, powered by Sports Betting Dime, if we haven't mentioned it. Check out sportsbettingdime.com for all your sports betting needs. I'm Bob Duff. He's Kevin Allen, and he's Sasha Farouk. And we'll all be back with you before you know it. Thanks, and uh, have a great day.